<laughs> well, hello, and welcome to Tech Report. I was just playing around with my Arcos 7.0 portable internet tablet. And on this episode of Tech Report, I'm going to be giving you a full review of this internet tablet and giving you a good idea of what it can do. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this tablet, especially as compared to the Apple iPad, is the size. Um, when I was first looking at purchasing a portable tablet, um, I thought that I needed a 10-inch screen. But it turns out that once I got playing with this thing, I discovered that 7 inches is just the perfect size to do basic tasks like sending and receiving emails or web browsing or watching videos online. It's also the perfect size to just take it and throw it in the back pocket or throw it in a backpack and head out to a cafe for a whole day of internet searching. All right, so let's take a look at some of the specifications of this device. And the main interface is a seven inch capacitive touchscreen. Now this is similar to the touchscreens that both the Apple iPad and Samsung's Galaxy Tab are running. A capacitive touchscreen is important as it's a lot more sensitive than its resistive counterpart. For example, because of a capacitive touchscreen, you can control this device with simple swipes and swishes and multi-touch gestures, as opposed to having to jam the thing with a stylus. When buying a tablet, a capacitive touchscreen is a must. Let's look under the hood for a minute, and this device is powered by a one gigahertz mobile processor. One gigahertz is plenty fast. In fact, it's faster than my first PC was, and it'll be able to handle most applications that you're gonna throw at it. The device is a little bit skimpy in the RAM department, however. Uh, it only has 256 megabytes of RAM, but as long as you're careful and you manage your applications carefully, make sure you close them when you're done, this will be plenty of RAM for you to use. Unlike the Samsung Galaxy Tab, this particular tablet does not support 3G connectivity, so you're not going to be able to browse the web directly from the cellular network. However, it does support tethering over Bluetooth and over USB, so if your smartphone has a good data plan, you'll be able to access the web wherever life takes you. It also has a Wi-Fi card installed. Um, and although the Wi-Fi card isn't necessarily as good as the one I have in my laptop, it does a pretty good job of getting signal strength from my router in the basement anywhere in the house. Speeds on the device are not perfect. I can pull about 5.6 megabits per second down, according to speedtest.net, whereas my laptop can pull about seven or eight. However, for an internet tablet, five megabits per second is plenty. Now the biggest question I have when purchasing any mobile device is what is the battery life? Now Arcos advertises the battery on this guy to be about 10 hours with Wi-Fi connected. In reality, I've found that it's more in tune to five or six hours with wireless. This still beats my laptop, however, which only gets about four hours, 30 minutes on a full charge when connected to a wireless network. IO ports on this device are minimal. You've got a connection for your supplied power adapter as well as a micro USB port. Now, it's important to note that this device does not support charging over micro USB. So if you're going on a long trip, you'll want to bring your power adapter with you so you can charge it when you run out of battery power. One cool optional accessory is the micro USB host adapter. What that allows you to do is it plugs into the micro USB port and breaks out into a full female USB connector. This allows you to connect, say, a mouse or a keyboard or even a flash drive to increase productivity on the device. Also available is a micro SD card slot. This allows you to connect a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes to easily increase the onboard storage of this device. Next to that, you've got a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so that you can listen to whatever movie or music you're listening to uh, without disturbing everyone else with the onboard speakers. We've got a mini HDMI jack, which allows this device to be connected directly to a TV by way of an adapter cable. And uh, using the supplied TV connection utility built into Android, it does a pretty good job and I was able to plug this thing into my TV and be watching YouTube videos on the screen within about two minutes of uh, deciding to test this, this feature. Taking a look at the front panel, you've got two sets of speakers, so this device does support full stereo and it's got a webcam. I think it's only a 1.3 megapixel webcam, but at least it takes decent enough pictures. Like most portable internet tablets, this device runs the Google Android operating system. And the actual interface of Android may not be quite as responsive as something you'd expect from Apple with the iPad, but it does a great job of what I need it to. 
A huge advantage of the Android operating system is the fact that the file system is not locked down in any way. Using an application included with the device called Files, you can have complete root access to your system partition uh, without having to deal with any permissions issues. Another advantage to Google Android is the ability to run standalone applications similar to what you'd be able to do on a PC. Like the Apple devices, Android has something called a Marketplace, which is a huge library of applications that automatically download and install. However, if you want to be able to run a standalone application that your buddy developed for you, you can. You download something called an APK file, and like an executable on a PC, you just run that on your device and it will automatically install for you. One cool thing about the Android operating system that Apple doesn't support is the ability to run Flash inside your web browser. For instance, if you bring up the default browser page, um, you can run YouTube videos or other embedded Flash videos directly in your browser, as opposed to having to use a special YouTube application like Apple makes you to. This is one really killer feature of the Android that beats the pants off of iOS. Now, something you'll notice right away when you purchase the Arcos tablet, unbox it and get it all set up, is that it's actually missing the Google Marketplace application. But don't fret, some of the guys over at XDA Developers Forums have come up with a version of Marketplace that runs flawlessly on the Arcos 70 internet tablet. Um, you can actually download that file directly from my website. Um, I'll have the link to that at the bottom of the screen here. It'll also be in the description. One final huge selling point, for me anyway, is the ability to connect directly to shared folders. For instance, I've got a couple of shared folders on my home server, and if I want to access them on my tablet, all I have to do is navigate to it from the file system. This makes transferring files to and from this device an absolute snap. In conclusion, the Arco 70 is a really cool device. It is clear to me, however, that the Google Android operating system isn't ready for prime time on a tablet PC just yet. If you can hold off buying one for six months to a year, I would highly recommend doing so. The hardware on this device is very good indeed, and when new versions of Google Android come out, I'm sure it'll be readily upgradable. If you do want to buy one of these right now, however, I would highly recommend the Arcos 70 Internet Tablet. For Tech Report, this is Christopher, reporting.